Hey there, hi there. I'm Ella Zana, your friendly neighborhood public health professional, and this is Zana's Health Corner. Today, we'll be talking about BIPOC mental health. July is BIPOC Mental Health Awareness Month. BIPOC stands for individuals who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color. This annual observance is largely thanks to B.B. Moore Campbell, who is an accomplished American author, journalist, teacher, and mental health advocate. Founded in 2008, BIPOC Mental Health Awareness Month was created to raise awareness regarding the unique struggles and challenges that historically excluded marginalized and underrepresented groups face regarding their mental health. It also serves as a time to highlight resources and increase access to mental health services and treatment. So you might be asking yourself, what are the connections between race and mental health? Well, for individuals around the world who are black, indigenous, or people of color, they often face discrimination, prejudice, microaggressions, verbal abuse, physical acts of violence, and other forms of trauma due to the color of their skin. This can cause emotional and physical distress in the moment, but over time, repeated exposure to these experiences of racism can cause negative long-term health outcomes for individuals and communities of color as well. Experiencing interpersonal and systemic racism is associated with a number of negative mental health and physical health conditions, including but not limited to depression, anxiety, PTSD, chronic stress or heightened stress response, hypertension, cardiovascular issues, various sleep disorders, substance use disorders, and eating disorders. Experiencing racism can also contribute to suicidal thoughts, difficulty managing emotions, relationship issues, problems and performance changes at school or work, lower levels of confidence and sense of self-worth, and an overall reduced sense of well-being. While race may be a major part of how an individual is perceived by and or moves through the world, it's also important to remember that an individual's race is not all of who they are. Instead, we should consider how race intersects with other identity markers and social determinants of health, like an individual's gender, their sex, age, ability, religious beliefs, nationality, cultural background, level of education, social economic status, and or geography. The combination of race and these other social identity markers and social determinants of health can largely impact an individual's lived experiences and their unique circumstances as it pertains to their mental and emotional health. There are a number of factors affecting access to mental health resources by members of diverse ethnic and racial groups. Some of those obstacles include economic barriers, such as a lack of insurance, underinsurance, or an inability to afford consistent care. Stigma is also a barrier to mental health access and utilization. In some communities of color, mental illness is seen as a weakness or moral failing. That can often breed feelings of shame and denial of mental health problems and or challenges, thus delaying one's likelihood to reach out and or utilize services. A lack of diversity among health care providers is also a barrier a lack of culturally competent providers is also another barrier, as providers who lack cultural understanding or sensitivity can often misdiagnose patients or give inadequate treatment. Language barriers and distrust in healthcare system are also barriers to mental health resources and utilization. Limited access to appropriate information about available mental health services and treatment is also a barrier that contributes to the lack of mental health service utilization. In some families and communities of color, the importance of family privacy or saving face in order to retain respect and avoid humiliation can also serve as a barrier to seeking care. Research indicates that compared to people who are white, black, indigenous, and people of color 
are less likely to have access to mental health services. They are less likely to seek out services, less likely to receive the care that they need, more likely to receive poor quality care, and more likely to end services prematurely. For example, Black adults are 20% more likely to report serious psychological distress than their adult white counterparts. Similarly, only one in three Black adults who need mental health care receive it. This is in part due to stigma in the Black community. One study showed that 63% of Black people believe that a mental health condition is a sign of personal weakness. Native and Indigenous people in America report experiencing serious psychological distress 2.5 times more than the general population over a month's time. Native and Indigenous communities experience higher rates of suicide compared to all other racial and ethnic groups in the United States. Similarly, Native and Indigenous communities in America start to use and abuse alcohol and other drugs at younger ages and at higher rates than all other ethnic groups. Nearly 90% of Latinx and Hispanic people over the age of 12 with a substance use disorder did not receive treatment. And according to the 2019 National Survey on Drug Use and Health, only about one third of Hispanic people experiencing any mental health illness received some sort of mental health treatment compared to 50% of non-Hispanic white individuals. There is also a shortage of bilingual or Spanish-speaking mental health professionals. Bilingual patients are evaluated differently when evaluated in English versus Spanish, and Latinx slash Hispanic populations are more frequently undertreated than their white counterparts. Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are three times less likely to seek mental health services than their white counterparts. So, how do we improve BIPOC mental health? Well, there are a couple things we can do. First, raising awareness is an important step that helps create an environment where social change and progress are possible. Also, improving mental health equity and combating various health disparities means that we as a society need to combat racism and all other forms of discrimination and prejudice. To improve BIPOC mental health, we as a society also need to increase information about the true realities concerning mental health care. So that way we can reduce stigma, promote mental health wellness, and increase access to mental health services and treatment. Encouraging local, state, and national politicians to prioritize mental health can also help eliminate barriers, increase resources, and access to mental health service utilization. Becoming a mental health advocate by being an ally is another way you can help to improve BIPOC mental health. Educate yourself on mental health related issues and do your best to use more appropriate, person centered, inclusive, and destigmatizing language. It'll really go a long way to improve the health and well being of those in the community you care about. Supporting individuals in your life that may need help dealing with mental health challenges is another way that you can improve mental health, not only for all people, but also for BIPOC communities as well. Choose to volunteer at or donate resources to a mental health organization. Share your experience with others, whether that's privately or publicly, and let them know that they are not alone and it's okay to not be okay. One in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year, and more than 50% of Americans will be diagnosed with a mental illness or disorder at some point in their lifetime. It's important to let others know that we can change how the world views mental health. We can continue the mental health movement by speaking out, sharing our stories, and showing others that we are not alone. Our societal perception of mental health including mental illness, will not change if we do not take action to change it ourselves. I hope today's video helped you learn more about the importance of BIPOC Mental Health Month. Feel free to check out part two, where I share information about my own personal experience with mental health counseling 
and I talk about five things I learned while in therapy. Of course, you are always welcome to like, share, and subscribe to HPHR for similar videos. And until next time, I'm Elizana signing off from Zana's Health Corner. Mm-hmm.